We're ready. I'm in your hand. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Once again, another Kingdom Man's Academy. Uh, we are definitely excited to see you, brothers, again, man. And and we're excited for this lesson from Brother Johnson and Johnson. It is November the 14th, 2022, as we're close to winding down the year. On that note, we're going to leave you in the hands of Brother Othello and Brother Joe Main Spears, and we're in your hands for devotion. All right, all right. Good evening, brothers. Uh, definitely looking forward to the series from J and J. Uh, definitely enjoyed it last week. Um, and uh, we'll get started with devotional period. Um, I will be reading the scripture and Brother uh, Hawkins will be saying the prayer. Uh, so the scripture reading will come from Luke chapter 12, verses one through three. And it reads, in the meanwhile, when so many thousands of the people had gathered that they were trampling on one another. Jesus commenced by saying primarily to his disciples, be on your guard against the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that it will not be revealed or hidden that it will not be known. Whatever you have spoken in the darkness shall be heard and listened to in the light. And what you have whispered in people's ears and behind closed doors will be proclaimed upon the housetops. I've just read Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. And I'll hand it over to Brother Hawkins. Yes, sir. Good evening, fellas. Can we all bow our heads? Our Father, we come to you this, this evening. First mm -hmm. of all, just giving you thanks, dear Lord. Giving you thanks for allowing us to see another beautiful day. They may not have been as pretty as we wanted it to be, but we were here. We were here because you chose us, understanding that you had something else for us to do today, dear Lord. I come with you tonight with a heavy heart because students are, are dying at other universities. And then just the other day, we lost a panther, dear Lord. I come to you because we are grieving. We're trying to figure out what's going on. But most of all, dear Lord, we're just confused just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I understand in you, there is always an answer. Mm -hmm. understanding you you are compassionate i understand if we have a question we can ask and you'll always provide that answer for us we may not understand it but it's okay because you brought us a mighty long way dear lord i ask tonight that you allow the men who are on this call to listen to observe and understand the information that is provided and we can utilize it tomorrow if you allow us to see another beautiful day dear lord so we can speak about your greatness we can have conversations with other individuals who may not even know who you are Mm -hmm. but dear Lord, we're thankful, thankful, proud, and joyful about who you are, what you have done, and how far you have brought us, dear Lord, because we're all children, children of God who are growing up to be men, men about our business, mm -hmm. men about your word, and definitely men about what we need to do, dear Lord. I ask you to continue to watch over us this evening, and thank you for your beautiful love, and thank you for all that you have done in your daughter's son's name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Hawkins. Brother Joe Main Spears, what a what a, a intimate prayer that was, Brother Hawking. Thank you so much for bringing getting us started with that word of prayer and yeah. with our scripture reading. And good evening once again, gentlemen. This is the Kingdom Men Academy. Uh, this is the the men's ministry that everybody around Houston is talking about. The KMA. Everybody's is talking about it. They want to know when we start, how to get in. It ain't it ain't hard to get in. Just come and meet up and meet up with us. Get that Zoom number and join in with us. Ain't that right, Brother Price? That's right. That's yes, right. sir. Right. Yes, sir. We are kingdom men who assemble every Monday evening to encourage other Christian men to become spiritually and physically fit, morally conscious, biblically sound, and ready for Christian service through regular fellowship with other Christian brothers. That is our kingdom men's mission. That is who we are. And that is what we do. On behalf of Willis Robinson, Darren O'Neill, we want to welcome you again because what we want to do tonight is to make you whole. That is what we want to do. And that's exactly what your, your commander in chief is. Jesus Christ wants us to do. God wants to make us just like Jesus. That is his mission. I seen a lady one day when I was, uh, I met her and I got a chance to talk to her. And I was telling her, I just became a Christian. And I told her I wanted to be like Jesus. She seen me two weeks ago, two weeks later, and she asked me, she said, hey, 
talking to me. She said, you still trying to be like Jesus? I had to think about it. I said, yes, ma'am. I sure am. I'm trying to be like Jesus. I'm trying to be whole. So, man, I think all of us on this call want to be whole. If you didn't, you wouldn't be showing up week after week like you're doing now. So, man, we welcome you guys to another meeting um, of trying to be whole Kingdom Men Academy. There was um, there was something that was said on last week. Stephen Scott mentioned a word, uh, saying invest. And one of the things that was brought out on last week was that God has invested so much into each one of us. He's invested his son, the, his, the blood of his son in us. Now, that really struck with me. I don't know how you guys felt about it, but if Jesus went, I mean, if God the Father went through all of that trouble to invest his only begotten son into our redemption, how, what is keeping us from investing in our own spiritual development? That was a question that puzzled me. What is it, if God invested so much in me, what is keeping men from investing in their own self? And I thought about that, Reverend Washington and, and Willis Robinson. I thought maybe because we might not see ourselves the way God sees us. If God invested so much in us, maybe he sees something in us that we don't see in ourselves. And the question is, what is it, it? What is it about us? What is in us that made God, the Father, invest His only begotten Son to come down here, bleed, take our place on Calvary's cross, and die in our place to redeem us? What is it about us? It must be something He has in, in put it, imputed into us, invested in, in us that is that is valuable. So whatever it is, I pray that we. You know, our job is to help you find out what that valuable gift is. It's something in you that God has placed, and we want to bring it out. I like that what the way Reverend Washington said that. He said, it's something in you. You just got to work it out. It's in you, but work it out so it can be manifested and served to the world. Now, the question is, guys, what is keeping us from investing in our own self? Well, what we're going to study tonight is what there's a word called a stronghold. Strongholds is some of the primary things that keep us from investing in ourselves and becoming all that God wants us to be. Now, what are those strongholds? How do I identify those strongholds? And how do I overcome those strongholds? Well, I see Osmond Johnson on the call tonight, and I think he's going to help us with those questions. So without further ado, Brother Johnson, we are in your hands. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Brother Ware. Um, I think my father, um, I think he wanted to lead us in, in another prayer uh, before we started the lesson. Yes, sir. Oh, Heavenly Father, we, we come this evening asking and pleading, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would soften these old cold hearts of ours. Mm -hmm. We need you, oh, Heavenly Father, in a special way. But most of all, oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who died so that we might have the right to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would give us unusual power mm -hmm. as men to go out and to witness and, and, and tell a dying word that there is joy in serving a true and living God. Yes. Open our minds, open our hearts. So that through the word, oh, Heavenly Father, we can teach others about you. As kingdom men, oh, Heavenly Father, we want to be not only hearers, but doers of your word. Mm -hmm. I pray for the uh, teacher tonight that you would give him what he stand most in the need of. And we'll be so ever careful to give thee all the praise, the honor, and the glory. It's yes. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you very much. So um, just like Brother Aware, Brother Ware uh, alluded to, um, this particular section, we're on page 54. Um, it says, do you know what you know? And this particular uh, uh, section of the chat of, of our study lesson is about uh, strongholds. Now, um, what are strongholds? 
Uh, a stronghold is a place that has been fortified so as to protect it against attack. Um, it also says that a stronghold is a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. Um, so that's the, the, the definition um, of a stronghold. Um, the scripture reference that we have is 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. And it reads as follows. For though we walk in, in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God and are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So um, while doing my due diligence and, and uh, studying for uh, the teaching of this lesson, um, you know, I always go back to see exactly where, uh, what's the, the, the preceding text uh, as to where uh, Paul is coming from. So as we all know, um, Paul, like I previously stated, Paul wrote this, uh, wrote the Corinthians. And what's going on is um, Paul is at is in Corinth, which is a port city. And so if you really, you know, just kind of, you know, think back and, and think as to what a port city looks like, it's not like what we are dealing with today. Um, let's say like the Houston port uh where you know it's blocked off and it's heavily secured and you know ships come in and out and they have these cranes and machines and things of that nature uh taking cargo off the ship putting cargo on the ship things of that nature we're talking about in these times it was it was completely different um here ships pull up you know people are getting on people are getting off cargo is getting on cargo is coming off but just like the houston port these ships are coming from all over the world, and the people that are getting off are all basically serving different gods. Um, you have some rich people, you have middle class, you have poor people, and so all these people are literally just coexisting um, at this particular uh, port city called Corinth. So in Corinth, um, it was, uh, or living in Corinth, it was um, Paul's letter to the church in Corinth uh, basically shows us that the city, um, the Christian community was being affected. Um, the, it was a myriad of problems, uh, which was spiritual superiority over one another, um, suing one another in public course, abusing the communal meal, um, sexual misbehavior. And so Paul was literally writing a letter uh, to the church of Corinth and they actually considered this particular section, well, actually chapters 10, 11, or chapters 10 through 13, they pretty much considered those three chapters his severe letter because he, you know, once he once he um, showed up at Corinth, he just saw how bad, how bad it had gotten and how, you know, the Christians were, were behaving. And, you know, he just wanted to, you know, almost like strike them down with a, with a hard fist because, he said, basically was saying like something needs to change. Um, at the, at the, the church in Corinth, um, there were converts from the lower classes, uh, but a lot of them were well-born, wealthy, and educated. And so one of the major things was is that the wealthy people didn't have to work. And so they were um, arriving early to take their communal meal. And by the time the middle class and the lower class members were arriving, um, the food and the drink for the communal meals had already been consumed. And so uh, the problem was a difference in socio socioeconomic levels. And the uh, Christians at the Church of Corinth thought that eating the meat, eating the meat or the communal meal um, was that was being offered to the idols was 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 real bad. And so, you know, that was they pretty much equivalented that or, or the equivalent to that was basically idolatry. <clears throat> And so Paul was writing this letter, um, basically, like I said earlier, just, you know, kind of just, you know, demanding that, you know, the Christians, um, they're, they're literally just wrestling with a lot of different things. Um, they're, they're wrestling with the flesh um, and they're wrestling with the blood. And so 
Um, this is not the actual first time uh, in the Bible uh, where, Paul, where, where, where it's being stated that you, you're wrestling with, with, with flesh and blood. Um, I looked and, and I saw a list of, of scriptures uh, in which, you know, it is being mentioned where, you know, every day, because you, you have to think, of, think about it. Um, the, the lesson started off with the man at the, at the gate called uh, Beautiful. So now that now that this man has become, uh, and I'm just using this as an example, now that this this man has been saved, it's not going to just be all you know fine and dandy, and <laughs> you're not going to be tested at all. Um, just because you know we all have been baptized, uh, we all have been, um, we 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 all uh, uh, you know confess and say that you know. Uh, we believe in, in in God. We believe that Jesus was Jesus died and he he rose on the third day. Even though you believe in all that, it doesn't mean that you know you're not going to be tested. Um, if you really think about it, and, and I I was speaking to my father about this. Uh, um, Job was tested. Um, Job had Job was you know we, we all know the story about Job, but. Um, you know, the reason I'm bringing about this test is because you remember um, Satan said that Job had a hedge that was that was too high and he asked him <laughs> if he could lower it just a little bit, maybe I can just attack him or, or, or I can, you know, kind of press him uh, just to just to test and test his faith. So if God is allowing for Satan um, to test Job, what do you think he's going to do with, with, with us? Um, you know, we're we're wrestling with flesh and blood every single day that we walk this earth. And so um, we're not going to always win. You know, I, I just want to reiterate that we're not going to always win because again, we have strongholds that um, we are literally just holding on to. And, you know, the only way that you can, you know, uh, uh, get, uh, uh, get past these strongholds is to pray. And, and ask God to, um, you know, remove that from you. And so, um, let me see. I also, uh, Irving, did you have anything to, to say about that? Before? Yeah, well, I, I guess the thing that I, I wanted to get your break so you can get your thoughts together. Uh, but my, my part was on flesh. Uh, I mean, you know, that's what I remember I, I mentioned to you. I just talked to him about five minutes before we got on. And uh, I just want to, you know, we talk, you talk about strongholds, but I'm going to talk about the part flesh. Uh, theological significance of flesh. Uh, biblically, the flesh is viewed as the created and natural humanity. It is not automatically sinful, but it is weak limited and temporal. Such qualities make it vulnerable to sin. Uh, and we all know that we are flesh and blood. Adam and Eve succumb to the temptations. I'm, I'm sorry. Adam and Eve succumb to the temptations uh, of Satan who promised them that they would be like God, uh, knowing good and evil knowing good and, and, and evil uh, back in Genesis 3 and 5 because of the limited perspective that they had or Eve had and the weakness of the flesh, Adam and Eve accepted the sin. I am so sorry. Let me turn my phone off. I didn't know I had it on. Uh, they accepted Satan's lie, basically. Uh, the weakness of the flesh is seen in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember when uh, where Jesus found the disciples sleeping. Uh, he enjoined them to watch and pray lest they enter into temptation for the spirit indeed is willing, but the, but the flesh is weak. Here the flesh was not sinful, but rather limited and weak due to fatigue and easy to succumb to sleep. So not necessarily, I mean, a lot of times when we are weak, and, uh, you know, it, we may not be sinning, but we are setting ourselves up for sin. You know, a lot of times you may be, you may see something 
that you like. And uh, it's if you look, uh, they say you you all right if you just do that one look. But if you look and hold your look a little too long, then you may fall to temptation or succumb to temptation. So you have to be careful. And a lot of times it says in the word of God that we need to flee uh, from, from uh, temptation, uh, you know, flee from sin. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a break with that flesh part. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I also, you know, Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh. I, my son and I, we discussed that, and I told him, make sure he said likeness of flesh, because, you know, in the Bible, it also says he became flesh, you know, uh, but he came to redeem those who are sinful flesh. That That is, Christ became flesh and blood. Uh, he became a person, but did not give in to the desires of the flesh. It, he was perfect until death. So I just want to say that, Osman, to help you out a little bit, give you a break. Okay, thank you very much. All right, um, so uh, let, let's go to the scripture. So it says, for though we walk in flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. So basically Paul is saying that um, he walks according to the flesh, in the sense that, you know, we all do. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Othello, you had something to say? I apologize. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to publicly, as you're getting after it, uh, ignore what your dad said. You're doing a great job. All your thoughts are together. I've written uh, two paragraphs already on stuff you said. I know he's your father. You got to respect authority. But I just wanted to throw in another one. Everything ain't just flesh. It's also spiritual stuff. There's things, and mm -hmm. I think the Bible is a scripture, unless I'm mistaken, it says... Uh, uh, but be renewed by the transforming, uh, be uh, transforming of your mind. And there's also another one that I, I talked about. It says, it says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So think about all mm -hmm. the brothers. People ain't all drinking out here. People ain't all struggling with women. There's also mental issues people are dealing with. So let's, I mean, I, I guess physical is a part of it. I'm not disputing anything your dad said, but I'm also noticing a stronghold also can be the mental and the emotional stuff too. You got it. You got Mike Johnson, Johnson, that's one. Yes, sir, Brother Mike Johnson. Yes, uh, um, beautiful lesson thus far, and I'm sorry for cutting in, but just to piggyback on Othello, you know, those strongholds are what we uh, think on and what we uh, have our mind on. Uh, I was always told that a thought reap an action, an action, a habit, and a habit, a lifestyle, And but it starts with that thought. Uh, in that book of Philippians, it um, reminds us to think on, think on those things that are pure, that are honest, that are just, that are lovely. If it has a good report, if it has any virtue in praise, think on these things. And them strongholds can bring us down because it's what we focus on. And just like when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he, he, he took his eyes on off of what he should have been focused on and start thinking about the circumstances. So what we think about those strongholds, what we, what we, what we, what we think about during the day, what we let uh, uh, consume our mind uh, takes us to a place uh, that is uh, oftentimes ungodly and don't allow us uh, to walk spiritually the way God would have us to walk because of what we're thinking. That's all I wanted to say, but beautiful lesson, OJ, beautiful lesson. I appreciate it, Brother, Brother Johnson. And Mr. Thompson? Yeah, I wanted to, uh, to, to add is that I really did uh, like the title of uh, tonight's lesson, Do You Know What You Know? And tonight we are discovering what strongholds are and how we can identify our strongholds. But prior to the lesson on stronghold, we talked about lameness. And uh, the first thing that we had to identify that we all suffer from some type of lameness, you mm. know, and uh, the, 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 the cure to solving uh, any problem or any issue is to understand 
the issue. And then once you understand it, then you can uh, begin to address uh, whatever you are uh, dealing with. And so as uh, we look at this particular lesson, it says, do you know what you know? And so it's up to us to know that <laughs> uh, we all probably have some type of stronghold. And but the good news is that if we once we identify what that stronghold is and how it is affecting us, uh, there is a remedy. And we talked about that in our last uh, lesson, too. There will be some tools that we will be able to use to overcome those strongholds. Hmm. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And that, that that's definitely definitely uh, correct, Brother Thompson. And so, um, you know, strongholds can like Othello said, they can range in you know several different things um uh, uh, drugs can be a stronghold um sex can be a stronghold pornography alcohol relationship relationships negative self-talk uh your job can be a stronghold food gambling um spending all of these type of things can be um considered strongholds and i was actually you know before we even came on I was talking to my father about, you know, just a, a simple stronghold that, that came to my mind. Um, I was watching, I, 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 every now and then I, you know, flip through the channel and I watch a show, our show comes on uh, that says my 600 pound life. And so um, a lot of you all have probably, you know, ran across it as well, but, but a lot of individuals in that particular, on that particular show, their stronghold um, can be a myriad of things, but you know what the way that they cope with whatever their stronghold is, they just continue to feed themselves, feed themselves until they just, you know, um, as far as like weight, they just continue to grow and grow and grow till they end up being over 600 pounds. And so you have a doctor that comes in and he basically tries to give them uh, certain things to do in order to remove the stronghold from 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 their mind because. It, it, it literally the stronghold starts in your mind first, and once it once it once your your mind accepts it, and it, once your mind accepts it, it pretty much just takes over your whole body. It literally literally just consumes you. Um, Brother Johnson, did you have something else to uh, say? Well, I was gonna ask that uh, somebody you get somebody to maybe read the the the, the beginning where it says about the POW because that kind of leads into what you was talking about, about drugs and, and what have you. Uh, yes. yes. That, that yes. way, you know, it, it's a uh, intro into the lesson actually. Okay. Um, would somebody like to read the uh, first paragraph as Brother Johnson mentioned? Amen. I would be happy to read it. Yeah, I can read it to it. Go ahead, Brother Ware. Who said that? Uh, Brother, Brother Gray. Gray. But the understudy. The understudy. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. <laughs> a POW is a prisoner of war, a person who has been captured by the enemy and is held hostage during conflict. Mm -hmm. The opposing forces control the prisoner's living conditions, yes. activities, and movements. Many men live like POWs, mm -hmm. but rather than being prisoners of war, they're prisoners of addictive behavior. They have been captured by the enemy and there appears to be no way of escape. They feel trapped in situations and circumstances that the world labels as addiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drugs, sex, pornography, alcohol, relationships, negative self-talk, work, food, gambling, spending, these things become coping mechanisms for life's pains, disappointments, and boredom. Mm -hmm. When an action or activity begins to influence you more than you influence it, it can leave you feeling trapped. Amen. Can, can I say something right quick, Osman? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure uh, by now everybody have heard about the incident. I think it was at Virginia, University of Virginia. Yes. Where the young man uh, killed, uh, I think, three people and wounded two others. I haven't really gotten all the, the info on it. But uh, obviously, 
he was addicted. He had something going on in his life that he was probably addicted to and it, and didn't accomplish it. And it seems from what I'm hearing, maybe I'll find out more, that he was a part of the football team. And for whatever reason, he may not have been, I guess, performing up to par or he didn't, maybe they didn't give him a position or whatever. And so uh, they were on a bus coming back from a play or something and he pulled out a gun and killed these guys and wounded several others. And so when we talk about addictive, uh, addicted be addiction behaviors, uh, that's an example of a person who has gone overboard and he uh, has not, uh, I guess, been able to deal with his anxieties. And these are the kind of things that we are facing today. Now, we can be on this line and we can talk about this from a third person personality, I mean, uh, uh, angle, uh, but actually these are things that are facing uh, society today. People have different, uh, they're wrestling with, you know, it says with, uh, f we're wrestling not with flesh and blood necessarily, but with things in high places, mental problems. Uh, it could be you know, authorities, that's what it sounds. I mean, you know, when you think about it, you think about it, but it could be other things. So uh, we can relate this lesson even to that. And I just want to, you know, interject that because that's what's happening right now. Thank you mm -hmm. very much, uh, Brother Johnson. And so um, when I, I actually thought about, you know, I always try to uh, think about, you know, maybe a stronghold that I may have been experiencing and uh, or, or that I may have had in the, in my past life, and uh, you know, a lot of you brothers, you know, of course, everybody knows that Irvin Johnson is my father, um, and so my stronghold is nothing like his. When you know we initially started this lesson, you know, with drugs and things of that nature, but one thing I can say that was definitely a stronghold, and I, I can pretty much assure you that you know my parents will probably agree. I know my brother will agree. My wife probably still agree, agree. She'll agree to this day. But for some reason, I enjoy like growing up. I always enjoy being mischievous, mischievous, like just being just bad. And so um, it was always like a thrill to me to try to do something bad and then hope that I get away with it. And I'm not going to say that most of the time I did. I, I got away with it. Uh, you know, most of the time I probably did get in trouble and caught a few whoopings, but it, it was just, a, a, I enjoyed it while, while I was doing it. But, you know, and I never really thought about the ramifications uh, that, it, you know, just if I, if I was to get caught, what those ramifications would be. But that was a stronghold that I, I, I would probably say it lasted maybe all the way up until maybe I got to like my first or second semester in college because I just have a, I just had a history. Um, I can go back to, you know, when I was in the fifth grade, uh, we were taking a standardized test. I balled up my standardized test and threw it in the trash, told the teacher that I wasn't gonna take the test and that I wasn't in school to take tests. I remember when I was in middle school, I used to, um, the, 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 some of the girls at, in the classroom, they used to pass out bubble gum and they would always skip me. So I used to steal the bubble gum. When I got to cop, when I got to high school, I remember one time um, I actually uh, threw a stink bomb in a classroom. I skipped school and things of that nature. So I was always trying to do something that was ungodly, like I would say. And I thought I got away with it every single time. I thought I would get away with it, and every single time I always got in trouble, trouble for it. And so at some point, I got tired of getting whoopings. I got tired of being um, um, uh, 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 disciplined. And so at some point, you know, you start thinking like, man, I could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble if I would have just done the right thing. My brother, it, the difference is like my brother, he was always considered an angel. Me, I was always considered just a bad kid. And that was just, you know, how, how I was growing up. But that was, that was literally a stronghold that it took me a while to get over. 
And I just enjoyed it. And even to this day, sometimes we'll be riding. And I tell my wife, I say, you know what? I thought about doing this, uh, but I'm not going to do this because I'm still trying to get over it. But again, that's that's my flesh warring with, 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 my, with the blood. I know what's right, but every now and then, my flesh still want to act up. I still want to go back to when I just, I'm just, you know, out of line. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm warring every single day and we are warring every single day uh, because, you know, the flesh wants to do one thing and the blood, want, blood wants to do another. Um, brother, where you have your hand up? Yes, I was. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I've uh, seen how this lesson kind of fits into the big scheme of what Tony Evans is saying is that uh, <clears throat> God wants to make us whole. But there's some strongholds that we might be facing that keeps us from being whole. And the author went, went on and enlisted uh, quite a few of these things. Now, you just gave us a testimony about your behavior. And I think it's, it's what he might consider negative behavior. The question right under that scripture says, what must happen first in order for us to overcome a stronghold in our lives? You just mentioned something about how you... Would you consider yourself overcoming that negative behavior or are you still wrestling with it? What was the first thing that you did to overcome it? I got tired of getting whoopings. That's that's it. Okay. You got tired got, of getting the I results. got tired of, yeah, I got tired of being, you know, beat down. I mean, I, I I'm telling you, man, I it was some sometimes I was, I think I was so bad that I used to get whoopings two, three times a week, you know, and I, I it never dawned on me that I was causing my own uh, situation, you know, because it was so exciting to me. I wanted to be, I wanted to be mis mischievous. And, um, you know, I, once I got tired of, you know, getting whoopings, then I was like, you know what? I just need to start doing right. I need to go about doing the right thing. So, you know, I, I, I had to, I had to stop. So wouldn't you say that if you see somebody, you come across somebody who might be, uh, caught up under a stronghold, wouldn't a, wouldn't the logical answer would be question would be, aren't you tired of getting the same results, or aren't you tired of getting, you know, living the same old you know dead end life so to speak in so many words? Wouldn't that be the logical question to ask an individual? Um, yeah, it, it it is the it is the the logical thing. Uh, but like I said as well, I enjoyed it so much because it was a thrill. And but, but you know, once I got to a level to where I just got fed up, and I didn't want my daddy to hit me no more with that belt, <laughs> or, 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 or my mama to you know just just jump across the table and smack me in the face, uh, you know, until until I got to that point and I said, you know what, I'm 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 just I just can't take this no more. Then I, I recognized like you know what. I need to do better. I need to take a self-reflection and see what, what am I doing wrong? Um, because, you know, I, I'm not one that's causing this situation. So once I did that, that, that self-reflection and said, hey, you know, instead of doing A, you can do B, and B is going to save you a lot of headaches, a lot of pain. And so that's, that's you know, once I figured that out, then, you know, things started to change. Thank you so much. Oh, no I, problem, Brother Smith. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, so I guess we, we should probably read that bottom half, that, that, that second paragraph. Yes, sir. And the underneath. Yes, yes. You, you know, we're kind of hitting on that, that piece there. Uh -huh. You can go on and read it, Brother yeah. Smith. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I sometimes compare addictive behavior to quicksand. The harder you try to get out of a situation, the deeper you sink. Human methods can never can never set you free from a spiritual stronghold on your life. Rather, these attempts will make you sink faster. Another problem that arises when someone is sinking in quicksand involves focus. Remember when Peter stepped off the boat to walk to Jesus on the waves? <clears throat> Things were going great. Then his vision for, for circumstances overtook his, his focus on Christ. Where you look matters. If a person stares only at the sand surrounding them, they will miss the stick being held out to them that they must grasp to be dragged out. We rely on human methods when only spiritual methods can deliver. 
and and consider that, that calls, is, consider oh, calls words about about our our conflict going on all around us. So in other words, you don't you know we we can't just continue to stop leaning on our own understanding, but to stay focused on Christ and and to to put on the whole armor of God. But I also like to add to you know if you if you can't remember every piece of armor, always remember put on Christ. Yep. You put go. on Christ. Yes, <laughs> you 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 fully armored. Mm-hmm. So, Brother yeah. Smith, you took you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yes, because I, I was I was I was about to get there. But 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 one thing I, I did want to ask, I, I gave my 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 personal um testimony. Uh the, the, did anyone else want to share uh, a testimony? Uh Brother Spears, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, I would say that uh, you know, uh Majman, it's funny that uh we had we had similar experiences growing up. Uh and, and I would say um up until uh probably my 10th grade of high school. School, you know, of catching those whippings. My dad, he whipped me every time. And so eventually I would say um, that the word really started to permeate through me uh, at that point. And, um, and that's when, you know, I started having a change in my life. Um, and I think it, it went hand in hand, you know, uh, the spankers, but I always went to church and Sunday school, but it's just, uh, it didn't quite get through me. But you know, eventually I got to the same point you were. It's like um, I was convinced that every time I get in trouble, I'm gonna get my butt spanked by my dad, and it just I got I got enough, and then really that word really started to work in me. At that point, I just crossed over into a different phase. But I pretty much your story is very similar to mine. <laughs> so thanks for sharing. Hey. Oh, you welcome. He beat it out of me too. I, I hope I can. I, I'm showing that today. Uh, brother, brother Othello. Yes, sir. You hit right on the head. Uh, I think it's important to also designate this moment that uh, this is a wonderful forum that we can be a little transparent. But uh, you know, we all know what the thing is that we struggle with. I think the scripture says, "Reverend Washington, the fool speaks his whole mind, but the wise consider it for later." That goes fitting right here. It's like, we're not foolish if we share everything, but the key is I'm noticing also is I think Pastor preached a while ago about uh, microscopically, you know, God views this, but it's also kaleidoscopically. So sometimes you can look back at stuff that used to be strongholds. Like uh, something comes to mind for me, there used to be a uh, casino in Chicago and I made an enormous amount of money at the railroad. I mean, it was nothing, what I was using, uh, Brother Brown was just trying to keep up with the white boys. The white boys had the money, so I rolled with them. Go try to shoot a few dollars. But all I'm getting at is looking back at it now, I used to, uh, Brother Way, I used to pray and fast always the last week of December. I would always do that. And then I slowly lost that appetite to go where they were going because it was nothing to them. They had inherent wealth, so they could do it. But me, I was kind of like kind of hurting myself by just going a little bit after work. And so I slowly, slowly, they would ask, hey, man, how come you going home? Or, hey, man, how come you're doing this? It's like, hey, God had been chipping away at that stronghold, a stronghold. And now for Lake Charles to be where it is, for wherever else people go, Kashada, I, it's like I, I can't even name the time that my man has crossed there because all those years have paid me back. And it's like now I can see, God, that was that could have been something that overtook me. But I was trying to keep up with white people and I was trying to, you know, make a few extra dollars, but it never was who I really was as a person. So. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, Othello. And Brother Luke? Um, well, in my younger days, um, I was mischievous, but I was always thinking I got away with it. So my dad would always tell me to be home by dark and um, I would just be towing the line. The street lights would have come on and I was sliding wheels getting in there and he would be like, all right, all right now. And so one time um, my sister and I uh, was able to go to the skating ring and he said, you leave with her and you come back with her. But, you know, my sister was coming back real early. So I was like, no, I'm gonna stay a little bit long. You go ahead, I'll, I'll make it there. And once I got home, my dad said, you couldn't come in the house. And so I'm standing outside. I'm like, what, what, I mean, I'm just circling. I mean, he can't be serious. Door closed, the doors are locked. So I'm just like, Oh man, so that night I had to sleep in the car, but that was my turning, but that was my turnaround to make sure before those street lights get come on, I will be home from this point forward. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, my, my parents, my dad never put us out, but my mom, she put us out a couple of times. So 
Uh, I know exactly how that feel. Not to sleep overnight. It was only a few hours. Um, so um, yeah, so so these these uh these, these strongholds, just like you know, brother brother Smith uh, stated, um, that we do have, you know, things that can combat, uh, you know, these these strongholds, um, you know, the war between the, the flesh and the blood, and so you know, like brother Smith stated, um, we have a whole outfit that we can put on. We can put on the whole arm of God to combat um, these, the, the flesh. And so, um, you know, once we put on, put on this, this entire, uh, uh, once we put on this entire wardrobe, you know, we have, a, we have, we don't have a fighting chance. We have, we, 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 we have God with us. We have Jesus with us. Again, you have to remember, God sent his son here in the flesh and he was, he had strongholds and he was tempted just like we are being tempted today. So he knows everything there is to know about our walk. Everything there is to know. He knows about all like all the, the things that we are going through. He knows about um, when we're gonna when we're gonna conquer uh, these strongholds. And so, you know, it, it's basically we have to we have to put it in, in his hands. Um, let me ask you all, have you ever attempted to overcome a stronghold of the flesh by using the flesh? And what was the result? Hmm. Yeah, they get down, get down on my knees. <laughs> get on my face and pray to God. Like I say, I'm just trying to fix it myself. That didn't cut it. <laughs> and it never will. Now you, you literally have to have to beg, you know, because, you know, you, you like like I said, you you think you are accomplishing it. You think you're over, overtaking it, overtaking the stronghold. But, you know, I remember I, I talked to uh, Brother Berkeley and we all know brother about Brother Berkeley's um, sobriety. And it could take one small thing. You may think that you've overcome that situation. And it, I remember Brother Berkeley, he would say, man, sometimes it could just be a smell. I don't have to be nowhere in the presence of what's going on, but it could be just something as simple as a smell that may cause my mind to go back. And the next thing you know, I got this thing wrapped. I'm, I'm in the same situation because I thought I could beat it by myself and I couldn't. And so I had to put my whole faith and put my whole trust in God to even even work on my senses because they they were weak as well so I mean like I said you have to put on the entire armor of God in order to accomplish and and and, and conquer the stronghold that you may uh be experiencing uh, brother uh -huh. yes amen Johnson is the best way that it was explained to me was that how can you feel that the mind that created this problem can get you out of it? Hmm. <laughs> an addict, an addict mind is convinced that it can live without him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get in that stronghold and that stronghold got you. I don't care. You know, we use stronghold, but the, the Bible uses sin. When you get in that sin, it could be three o'clock in the morning. They say, "Okay, get up. We go and get some stuff." <laughs> Are we off? Yeah, we go. We go. You can fall in love with a substance. You'll be loyal to it, and it's just a thing. Why do you think I stick around the church so much and around the men of God? I I need I need people like that. Mm -hmm. I need kingdom men. I need to be around men like y'all. Mm -hmm. That's gonna tell me, say, man, don't go down there no more. I think y'all heard me say this before. Brother Clark heard me talking to my wife one day on the phone. He's 90 years old. And he said, Mom, you said something on the phone. And I didn't say nothing real bad. I said, damn. And he heard me say that. I was on the cell phone. We was going fishing. That's my fishing partner. He said, Mark, I don't want to hear you say that no more. And I wanted to say something to him. But I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I did? I didn't say that no more. Mm -hmm. Because All he right. taught me something. 
You don't talk like that in front of your wife. You need to be around people who have overcame something. And Reverend Anderson told me that about lying. I lied one time when I was at work. And he said, Mark, one day you're going to have to tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. I said, ma'am, I'm going to lose my job and I'm going to lose. He said, Mark, one day you're going to have to tell them people the truth. And the day I told them people the truth, they say, bring me all my stuff that, that belong to us when you come. Bring it with you. Because <laughs> you are fired. <laughs> but I had to one day, one day, and every man on this call had to do this. Mm -hmm. One day you're gonna tell yourself the truth. Yeah. You need you need somebody. You need you need to be around people of God. You need to be around. Mm -hmm. Even after I got sober, I had to get around some some godly men. The men who could who who could tell me the truth, who loved me enough to tell me the truth. That's that's Amen. what addiction does. Addiction will kill you. It will take mm -hmm. you, yeah. and that stronghold will do the same thing. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. All brother. right. Thank, Thank you, you, Brother Berkeley. Uh -huh. uh, brother Smith. I just I just um also brings to my remembrance of, of Paul, you know, Paul asking God to remove this thorn. And God's not going to remove that thorn. So, I mean, you know, we can, you know, even though we, you know, yeah, we, we should, you know, we pray to God because that's, that's where we're getting our strength from. But God wants us to, you, you know, he may not completely remove that, you know, from you. He wants you to continue to rely on him because, you know, if you completely, you know, get rid of it, then you don't think you did it. Yeah. You, you know. Well, so, Brother Smith and Brother that, Johnson, that what if situation. you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut y'all, but what if, listen, we're talking about the Kingdom Man Academy. We're talking about making men whole. And there's a lot of men who might be caught up in a stronghold right at this very moment. Mm -hmm. And they cannot be they cannot be a part of being in the presence of other kingdom men. Why? They might be having an addiction of watching the Monday night football. Okay. <laughs> they might want to put the Monday night football before coming to Kingdom Man Academy. Now, how would you what would you tell a person like that? I mean, you just can't go up and tell them you got to put on the whole armor of God. They don't even, they probably won't even know what that means. They, give me some real talk of what you would tell an individual who's caught up in the stronghold that's keeping him from becoming whole, keeping him from being on these meetings, keeping him from being a part of what we're doing. What can I tell a brother? What can I offer him? You know, you tell me put on the whole armor of God, you know, put on Christ. But what does that mean to an individual? They might not even know what that means. Well, I, I think the first the first thing that, that, that I would say to to that individual is, is, look, we're not trying to take up all your time. I mean, we we want to we want to come uh, come to Kingdom Men Ministry and we want to, you know, have a let's have a real conversation. But, you know, we, we need your involvement. Uh, we're not here to, you know, take up two, three, four hours of your time. So if you could, first of all, give us a, give us a sufficient amount of time to, you know, just have a, 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 a basic conversation because that's that's literally what we have. We're just having a, a, a genuine conversation about um, being a man for one and living, living for Christ. And so, um, you know, we all at some point had to fight with that, with that struggle. And so, um, you know, I, I, that I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, if anybody else has has a comment about that, uh, you can help me you out. Got, I'm on. You got four people. Uh, brother, brother Hawk. I mean, brother Smith was first, and then brother Hawkins. I think. Eddie no, I Smith. I, I think I might have been last, or what have you. I think I know brother. All right, Hawkins. brother Hawkins. Uh -huh. yeah, I think to be quite honest with you, I think it's just the conversation because you have to be relatable. I think in most times. Even as a young man, when you talk to an older gentleman about life and that, that older gentleman has been through things, that conversation becomes so intimate because you learn from those conversations. And then in that conversation, you start to speak about who God is and what, what that is and how that conversation can grow into to getting some knowledge about how it can help. I know speaking of my grandfather, my grandfather would always talk about him working in a brickyard. He retired, he worked so hard, but in the, his tone and what he did on a daily basis, you would learn being consistent. You would learn you had to be on time. 
And that was one of those things that, that brought me out and just allowed me to understand what those things can be. And when you talk to older gentlemen about life, they can tell you, you know what, Mr. Hawkins, I, I, hey, there was some pretty women at work. I know you see them, but do you understand how that can affect you if you don't go about your business while you're there? Mm -hmm. you talk yeah. about your habits. We all have habits. Uh, everybody's habit is not the same because we're all different individuals. But when somebody can actually say, yes, this habit put me in that situation. Yeah. That's when you can relate to that. And that's when yeah. those real conversations come into play about the Bible, about God, because that is now your opportunity to bring up scripture. That is now your opportunity to say, well, look, this is what Paul did. Look, do you know what happened when this is, look about what about Peter when he wasn't focused on who God is and what God mm -hmm. was saying? <laughs> those things come into play and that's how you do that i think well for me that's how i know i appreciate my mentors no matter where those mentors are because they've been through so much i know that's how i can count on them because they've they've walked the same walk that i've been through and i continue to go through on a regular basis there you go, go thank you brother Hawkins and brother thompson yeah i would just like to uh, piggyback on what brother uh, hawkins said i think that uh, you first have to start off by making sure you have a good relationship with the person that you are trying to uh, to mentor or to come to that point uh, in their life. Uh, and it's just as, uh, and when you start to develop that relationship, you then ask the same question uh, that Jesus asked. And that is, do you want to be made whole? Mm -hmm. You know, some people are, are happy in the situation that they in. And uh, the reason why they stay in it is because they don't want to. Mm -hmm. But during that relational time when you're developing that friendship and when you are uh, cultivating uh, the relationship with that person, then as uh, uh, Brother Hawkins would say, uh, God will give you an opportunity to share with that person in a non-threatening uh, way that might not have scripture to do with it whatsoever. But once you get that brother's uh, ear and that his confidence, then you are then able to tell him about Jesus. But you first have to, I think, build that relationship and find out if the brother really wants to become whole. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Thompson. Brother Smith? Uh, yeah, so I think what Brother Webb was saying, you know, if they asked, you know, how do you, how can I, you know, what is the home whole armor or what have you? But uh, you, 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 you tell them that. Of course, I would, I would tell the person that the, 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 t the time, the sacrifice, and the consistency that you use to do whatever that is. So, like you, for example, uh, messing around with this woman, the time you spent, you know, taking her out to eat, or the time you spent drawing her drinks, or whatever time and sacrifice you did is the same time you're going to have to do as far as praying, praying unto God, the sacrifice, the time that you're going to have to do consistency of, of praying to God to, to, to help you through this, this stronghold or through this sin that you, that you're dealing with. So it's, it's on the, on the flip side. So like Paul, for example, Paul did all, wasted all his, spent all his time and energy persecuting the church, doing all the things to, to the Christianity of tearing it down. And of course, on the flip side, now he's, he's, he's that same energy he's using for God. Of, of of doing you know winning souls to Christ so it's 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 on the flip side of that so of, of how to achieve that so it's not going to happen overnight so yeah <laughs> and uh brother Milton I see you brother Henderson I, I'm gonna get to you yeah brothers uh it's funny yeah. brother where he would bring up football somebody want to look at Monday night football and we all have that issue as men. But at some point, it's, it's, it's a growing situation. Mm -hmm. we, we all have to grow to get away from these things. You know, because if a brother, a brother, he going to watch Monday Night Football and Nip Texas Nip playing that Monday night. What'd you say? Can you hear me, Brother Well? Yeah, you ain't gonna spend time watching the Texans, but yeah, go ahead, brother Milton. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know, one, you might want to go to someone else and come back to Milton. 
No, I think they can hear me, brother. Uh, oh, we, we can hear him, brother. Well, keep going, brother Simmons. We hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, brother, it's a growing situation, and we all have to support one another on that because even Reverend, Reverend Washington now, if certain people playing, uh, whether it's basketball or whatever, there's a certain game. If if the Super Bowl was on Monday night, we'll all have a problem with it. <laughs> but it's a it's a situation that it it takes time. It's sort of like Osman was talking about what he was doing. He had to go through some growing pains before he came out of that situation he was, you know, that he was fighting with. And I think we all be fighting with something. And from the support of one another and getting on our knees and praying about it, you know, you'll eventually grow out of it. But it, 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 it takes some time. It's, it's a growing situation. You know, we're not gonna just immediately get whatever it is that, that's got us. We're not gonna immediately just get away from it, but it's gonna take some time and it's gonna take some time on your part, you know, and maybe some brothers talking with you to help you get through these situations. Thank you, Brother Milton. I have Brother Williams, Brother Henderson, Spencer, and Reverend Callum. Uh, Brother Williams. And Brother Justin, thank you. Uh, a little horse this evening, but getting back to the question, so what must be first in order? What must happen first in order for us to overcome a stronghold in our lives? <clears throat> I think the first thing we have to do is, is recognize and admit that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Then you got to recognize that you can't solve that problem by leaning on your own understanding. You got to turn over to God because scripture tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. And he strengthened us through prayer and meditation on his word. Then we have to surround ourselves with other Christian brothers because there are going to be times when we get weak, but if you have a prayer partner that you can call upon in that weak moment, and he can help you get through that. But you got to recognize there's a problem, admit you have a problem, realize you can't handle it on your own, turn over to God so he can strengthen you through prayer, meditation on his word, and have a, another Christian brother that you can call upon when you in that weak moment. Thank you, Brother Williams. Brother Henderson, you up. Oh, I was just going to address your question of... Uh of someone who, who may be interested in, in possibly uh, not missing uh, the game. I, I, I myself, uh, you know, I do like football. I stopped short of calling myself a fan. I don't want to be a fanatic uh, behind anything uh, worldly, to be honest with you. But what I was going to say was, was that uh, if you could, first of all, it's good that you are able to have this conversation with the brother, that's, I think that's good. The second thing is, is to get that brother to share some of the benefits of watching the game. Hey. Um, because I know for me personally, I have to remind myself, these people, for, they don't care nothing about me, okay? They get paid, they gonna get paid on Tuesday. They gonna get paid a lot of money on Tuesday. Yeah. So I need to so I have to remind myself for me personally, to take mm -hmm. care of my own personal business before I have time to sit down and watch a game. So if you're trying to get a brother to come to uh, the KMA, then one thing you want to talk, let that brother talk to you about is what are some, what are you getting out of watching the game? What are some benefits of you watching the game? And then mm -hmm. we talked about last week about cooperating with God. So then the next step will you have planted the seed. So hopefully that brother can come to a KMA session and then you can follow up with him and see if he had any benefits of coming to the session. So then hopefully he's able to hit, see for himself the benefit. What, what are you getting from watching this game? And, and what possible benefits do you see from fellowshipping with men of God and, and taking some time out to spend some time with God and, and, and see if he can come to the realization of himself? Is that really this game? I mean, it's not doing anything for me. The, the best thing you're going to have for a game is you're going to have an opinion to share on who did what. But you can look at stats. You can look at highlights. So instead of you having to sit there for three and a half hours just so you could uh, participate in Cooler Talk, you could spend five minutes just doing some research, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good, Anderson. 
Appreciate it, Brother Henderson. Uh, Brother Spencer. Ronald. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, thanks, uh, Brother Johnson. Yeah, I was just gonna just you were talking about football, and it just uh, <laughs> reflected back for me in terms of uh, I know uh, when I was probably uh, your age, Brother Johnson, and and young family and children, and so it was football, high school Friday, college Saturday, and pro on Sunday, and so I had to uh, as I was continuing to you know certainly trying to grow in Christ and trying to be the best husband and father I could be. And I had to look at that, uh, sports leagues all the other time. And one day my wife asked me a question. I came in from work and started my career out and trying to, you know, certainly build, you know, relationships with on the job and doing sports all the time, you know, in some form, fashion or another. So she asked me one day, and you know, two small kids, she said, honey, she said, you still enjoy being married? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, of course I do. Yeah, I said, of course I do. And uh, she said, yeah, I was just, I just wanted to ask you. Because she said, you know, you go, you work, you watch sports all the time. You come in, you play sports and, and it's just me and the kids. We're here, you know, and then you're gone. And I had to really, God really uh, prick my spirit. And I had to really look at that because it came down to, and uh, many of the brothers have touched on it tonight. What was, what was it? what was I willing to give up? That's right. I talk about this relationship with God in Christ and Lord bless you with a wife and uh, two small, wonderful kids. And, you know, we will give money, we'll give money, but when it comes to giving our time Ooh, yeah. and what the Lord requires of us and like Jesus, yeah. all Jesus said, count the cost. And so I, I sat there with my wife and I said, honey, I, I thank you. And I started, I had to give some things up, but then I had to pick some things up because I started picking my kids up and taking them to the gym with me to give her a break. Hmm. And so I could, when I played, you know, a basketball league. And so when I would come in from work and on the nights I played, I said, okay, honey, you just do what you need to do. Let me take the kids. I'm going I'm to bundle them up and take them, take them with me and spend some time with me. Or when I was sometimes when I was going off and to serve as a visiting professor of various, you know, HBCUs. And if it coordinated during the time the kids were out for their break, I took them with me so that she could have some time for herself. So in the Lord, it was just I couldn't do it in my own strength. It was just that basically he helped me, enable me to be able to do that and to recognize that at that particular point in my in my life in terms of what is it that you're willing to sacrifice, what is it you willing to give up? And when I started trying to just do a better job of dying to self and, and denying myself, and God just continued, you know, working with me. And he ain't through with me yet. So he's not through with me yet. But I had to really ask myself, okay, what is it that you're willing to give up to have a closer relationship, a closer walk with him, and to be able to, to be who he called me to be? Thank you, Brother Spencer. I have uh, Reverend Caleb and Brother Smith. Uh, good evening, brothers. Uh, I just wanted to add, um, as far as the um, strongholds go, I think I'm hearing it from a lot of you guys uh, about how do we get rid of the strongholds. And I would say that uh, Hosea, I believe, chapter four, verse six helps us with that, where he says, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Um, my grandmama used to tell me, we do better when we know better. Um, so uh, the thing is that we are, we have, we have, we, I think we've gotten it pretty good about getting rid of those strongholds, but there has to be something that replaces them. Because if you remove them and they're not replaced, uh, they will eventually return. And that replacing only comes through the word of God. Uh, we have to, uh, it comes down to what's real and what's rational. Uh, God's word is real. The way that we see it is rational. Uh, we rationalize, we like to rationalize 
uh, and a lot of it comes from my rearing. I believe mm -hmm. I can testify the fact that uh, I was raised in the country and we were raised tough and um, where God's word tells us to, uh, to be uh, meek and mild, my rationale tells me to be strong and tough, but the meekness deals with the situation a lot better than the toughness. And so I believe it comes down to just knowledge and that knowledge comes only through the word of God. We have to understand what, what is right and what is real is God's word. And when we uh, put time in studying and knowledge of the word of God, when we find ourselves in these situations, that word will be stronger than our rational thought and our rational thinking. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, Reverend Caleb and uh, Brother Smith. Yeah, I was going to say, um, kind of like what you better off with uh, Brother Smith said, I was going to say uh, accountability. You know, so I know, like myself, I, you know, being held accountable. You know, if you get that brother, like like bro, brother Spencer was talking about in regards to his wife, his wife just told him that. But if you, you know, a brother can do the same thing, you know, as far as holding that other brother accountable, you know, hey, you know, do this or whatever. This is the this is the consequences you're going to have to suffer, you know, just to keep us on track. I think accountability, accountability uh, would, would help uh, tremendously uh, for that brother or for all of us be held accountable yeah uh brother brother johnson well i, I want to say something about strongholds because a lot of times we think about as has been mentioned drugs or what have you but uh some of the things that could be affecting us could be the pursuit of success you know trying to be successful uh you could be a manipulator you can be a schemer uh, you can be smooth, a smooth talker, con man, uh, you know, uh, then perception of power, you know, that you, you want to get this power. I mean, those are strongholds, but I'm, I'm reading here where it says Jesus relied on spiritual weapons when he fought for, it, for our salvation. Philippians 2, 6 through 8 says, it describes who being in the form of God did not consider Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Uh, it says this kind of victory through humble obedience offended the Christian, the Corinthian, Christians because it seemed so weak. The carnal human way is to overpower, dominate, manipulate, and outmaneuver. The spiritual Jesus way is to humble yourself, die to yourself, and let God show his resurrection power through you. Thank, thank you, Brother Johnson. Um, brother brother Well raised, raised a question and he was, you know, he basically said, you know, about putting on the whole armor of God. And so um, the first thing I said, you know, when he asked about, you know, having brothers join on Monday and things of that nature, when I, I just think about some of the conversations that I have, like in my everyday, everyday walk, uh, when I'm speaking to somebody, let's say about the Bible or about Christ or about salvation of faith and you could correct me if I'm wrong, and I might be wrong, but usually what I do is, I mean, if I was in, Brother Smith and a lot of other brothers said it, you know, um, so eloquently, but they said that, you, you know, you have to have a relationship first uh, with the individual. And so in order for me to establish a relationship, I don't want to make it seem like I'm just like beating them down you know, with scriptures and the Bible, and this is what you should and should not do and things of that nature. But what I, what I, what I normally say is I tell them like, you know what, I'm not trying to be the most holy, the most spiritual. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, beat you down anything like this. I just want to have a, just a, a regular conversation with you. We don't even have to talk about the Bible. Uh, like brother Henderson said, we don't even have to talk about the Bible. Let's just let's just talk about you and let's just talk about me. 
and hopefully we can establish some kind of foundation or similarity, uh, you know, and, and, and that can build our relationship. And then we can talk about, you know, um, coming on Kingdom in and just devoting a, 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 an amount of time. Um, like I said, it's not going we're not we don't want to take you away from the whole game, because if you like watching football, you like watching football. But, you know, just give us an hour, hour and a half, two hours, um, just so we can have a conversation with you. And once you do it or join over and over again, and once you hear these discussions amongst all of the men, then you won't just hear the my, my testimony. You can hear other men's testimonies as well. And they can be more relatable to you than me. And like Brother Hawkins said, that'll build a relationship uh, that'll also build a relationship and you may even become a mentor to that individual. So it's all it's all about, you know, just getting you have to meet them at, at their level um, first. And then once you meet them at their level, now I'm not saying go to the club or go to the bar or whatever the case may be, but just meet them at, at some some place where they're comfortable and where you're comfortable. And then you just have a, have a, a simple conversation. And then that's how you can, you know, win them over or win them over to at least just come and visit. And hopefully the things that we're saying, the way we're conducting ourselves, um, the conversations that we're having, um, they'll be able to grow uh, just like we've all grown in the kingdom of ministry. Um, let's see, so uh, does anyone else have anything to uh, add? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this brother feels right here. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, some, um, can you hear? Can you hear yes, me? Sir. Yes, sir. Y'all can hear me. Yeah, uh, yes, okay, sir. yeah. Sometimes yeah. we don't know we have strongholds. You know, I heard I heard a sermon from uh, y'all know Reverend uh, Pastor H. B. Charles. He talked uh, about gambling. He had a, uh, a sermon, and it is out on an article on his website about gambling. And I didn't know I had a gambling problem until I realized that I was buying too many scratch offs, too many <laughs> lotto tickets on my mail route. I'm I'm I'm, I'm buying uh, you know stuff on my on my mail route every time I go in that lotto tickets. I'm gambling on the football pots. But he had an article that uh, talked about uh, gambling, and biblically he said that you know. It don't really come out and talk about gambling. We know they cash lots and everything. But he said that uh, uh, if you really depend on Jesus to supply all your needs, why are you gambling? You know, so it made a lot of sense to me. And I didn't realize that I had, I don't think it was a real bad problem with gambling. But, you know, biblically, if y'all could go on his website and get that article, it may change somebody's life because it changed mine. I haven't gambled, bought a lotto ticket in years. So that that really helped me. That's that's good, brother Michael. Mm. I, I bought a ticket when it got a, a Powerball ticket when it got up to one one billion dollar. I'm not going to lie right. to you about that. Brother Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so whenever whenever we get to the point, we have to still bring up Christ. It yes, says sir. in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you don't have a transformation, you're not going to make it to this call. Mm -hmm. Something has to happen in your life in a spiritual sense to make you know. It, you, you almost have to, this is based on attraction and not promotion. That's it. There you go. Yes. Very good, brother. This is so powerful. And you need, see, people are watching y'all. Y'all don't know this, but people are watching you and saying, man, how how he get like that? What is it about him that's different? It's God in you. You don't even know. <laughs> they they watching what you do. They seeing how you live and they seeing how much better life is the way you doing it. And it's different than the way they doing it. That's what I had to do as an addict. I had to come over there on, on the Lord's side and live. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, brother Reverend Berkeley. And so I, I'm a, I'm a, brother Johnson. You had something to say, like you was ready to. Uh, the the last thing I I'm gonna say is I'm just gonna read this this next paragraph, and uh, we can sum it up sum up the the strongholds with this. 
It says one reason strong is it's on page 55. Mm -hmm. It says one reason strongholds are so powerful is that they're so entrenched. They become entrenched when we buy into the lie that our situation is hopeless. His goal is to get you to believe that by nature, you are a drug, a drug addict or a manipulator or a negative person, that you are controlled by fear or shame, that nothing will ever change. Once you adopt this line of thinking, these helpful patterns become entrenched fortresses that are difficult to remove. As a result, your behavior deteriorates even more because we always act according to who we, be who we believe we are. And finally, the only solution is to tear down these fortresses by taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, just like Brother Berkeley just said. This means to replace your harmful and untrue thoughts with the better promises of God. Embracing this advice from scripture reprograms your mind and releases you from spiritual strongholds. You become free yourself, so then you can help other men rise to do the same. Uh, thank you, brothers, for allowing me to uh, uh, bring this this section, and uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. So it won't be no more J and J. We got you got one more week with J and J. Amen. Amen. We we sure have enjoyed J and J, man. Thank you all so much for bringing us, carrying us through that. Uh, do you know what you know? Uh, one of the things I, I've seen in that is that uh, uh, how do I know I have a stronghold in my life? Here's the, here's the, here's the sure enough sign. When Jesus, uh, John the baptizer says, I must decrease so that he may increase. But when you flip that and he start becoming decreasing, more and more in your life and you become increasing, you know that's a stronghold plan. That's a stronghold somewhere. Yes, and, I, and I really love what Brother Spencer said. All that he had some strongholds. He might not, he might not know it, but whatever was keeping him away from his family was a stronghold. And yes. all it took was his wife to make that one statement. That's right. Because he got the Holy Spirit in him, he convicted him and he did something about it. Yes, oh, what, a, what a testimony that was, Brother Spencer. Oh, All it yeah. takes is just a kingdom man or a kingdom woman to make mm -hmm. a statement and turn that thing around. One of, the, one of our problems as men is that we think that we can live life without Jesus. That's our mm -hmm. biggest problem. I've seen so many men who think they don't need a session like this. I'm all right. I can watch Monday Night Football. I don't need nothing like that. That's exactly what Brother Johnson just read in there. It's all in our mind. It's our thinking, you know, that I can live life without Christ. I said, well, go ahead, write on. As a matter of fact, write a book on it. I bet you it won't be but two pages. Anybody who thinks they can live life without Jesus Christ, they are fooling themselves, and the truth is not in them, man. So, brother, thank you so much, Brother Johnson. I pray that if there are some strongholds, that we will take those strongholds captive and realize, man, that... If Jesus decreased, I'm finished. Amen. Amen. Phyllis Robinson, we're in your hands. Wait, wait, let me let me say one thing before we go. Uh, my son and I would be glad to relinquish this. He said, Dad, I don't know what you got me into. And I, <laughs> but I have enjoyed uh this whole opportunity. And uh, you know, I want everybody, page 56 and 57, because uh Brother Ware said that we'll go into next week, uh, the 21st. And then uh, I think we're going to have a break. Is it the break after that, Brother brother Ware? After the 21st, yes, sir. Okay, so next week we can work with page 56 and 57 if that's okay. And we'll close this out. And y'all be through with the J&J &J team. It sounds like a stronghold in your life there, Johnson. Yeah, it is, so right? To get I'm letting it win. <laughs> I, I think that's correct, brother. Uh, correct me, brother uh, Robinson or brother O'Neill or brother um, uh, Washington, if the if the 21st is, are we going to meet after that day or something? So kind of address that, brother Washington, in your time. Really, we're in your hands, sir. Good evening, brothers. Again, thank you, brothers. Johnson, father and son, for an excellent job tonight. Uh, we are looking forward to next week. 
that uh, we will get deeper into this and then we'll end it on that note. Uh, tonight, we're going to ask uh, Brother Jared Mathis if he would give us the first prayer. Reverend Mark Berkeley, if you would give us the second prayer. And Brother Kelvin Peters, if you would do the Kingdom Man's Oath tonight. Pastor Washington, you have any Hey, uh, good evening again, brothers. Uh, anybody here for the first time? Anybody here? I saw a couple of names. Aaron Mitchell's with us again this week. Thank you for joining us. And old brother Collins from Austin joined us tonight. Uh, I saw little Everett Fletcher. I think little Fletcher was with us tonight. So we're glad to have him. And then uh, Kenneth Price started us off. We chatted with him early. And then I saw Wilbur Freeman, brother Freeman. Yeah, is this your first time, brother Wilbur Freeman? Yes, sir, it is. Are you a new member? Yes, sir. I will be listening in from now on. Well, you're a new member of Lily Grove, or you just joined us? No, tonight? sir. I was invited to get on the call. Thank you again, Brother Freeman. I really mean that. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Robinson, uh, as far as the agenda passed the 21st, I don't know what would stop us from continuing uh, until we get to December. It's just two more weeks, but I, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to chat about that. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, Johnson, I, I don't see how in the world it would be a miracle. Y'all can finish next week. All the, all the uh, hey, questions y'all got left. Trust but me. That's all right. But that's all right. We, we <laughs> welcome whatever y'all give us. We Our daily bread. Lord, thank you for this food we're about to receive. So thank you all. <laughs> all Amen. Amen. Brother, Brother Robinson. If he's cutting this short, then he's cutting this short. Let the Lord deal with him on that one. Brother Mathis, are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes. Brother Robinson, I'm here. All right. Can you offer the first prayer? Then Reverend Berkeley and then Dr. Earl. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come in the ominous matter we know, Lord. We come looking at the hills from which come in our help. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, for all that we have heard and all that have been said this evening, Lord. We come seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven, Lord, and all his righteousness, and all these things you say will be added unto them, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping us and keeping us, Lord, for watching over us. We ask that you bless every one of us today, Lord. Help us, Lord, to love one another, to keep your word. Let iron sharpen iron, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. Bless our leadership today, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Take away the, the strong man, Lord. Yes, sir. And help us look to the hill from which come with our help, Lord. For we can't do nothing without you. Oh, no. mm -hmm. We thank you for your word this night, Lord. Thank you for Johnson and Johnson. Continue to bless them, Lord. Continue to fill their head with wisdom and knowledge. Thank you, bless us all one by one and bless us all together. Bless Reverend Washington, Pastor Anderson, all the deacon board, Lord. Lord, you gave us a hard job, Lord. You say the labors are a few, Lord, but the harvest is plenty. Give us your word, Lord. Just go out and tell the dying world of your goodness. We bless your name this evening and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Eternal God, our Father. Known to us in countless ways and times without number. We turn to thee right now that we ask your choice blessing on these men on this call. And I ask in a personal way to send somebody, somebody, some, some way, somehow, that they may turn somebody to Jesus Christ and live. Use their testimony, use their, their lives to let their light shine in, in, in someone else's life that they may see the Father through them. We thank you for all the men tonight. We thank you for the leadership on this call. The Wabs, the Robinsons, the, the, all of the brothers. Yes, sir. Every last one of them. Yes, sir. Let them keep them as only you know how. Yes, sir. Then we complain for Pastor Washington and Reverend Anderson, our pastor, our leader. Thank you for the Lily Grove Church. We don't know what we have now until we look around the rest of the world and see what's going on at Little Grove. So we want to thank you in advance. Now, Lord, we come asking for your, your peace in our country. 
there's shooting, there's killing, there's, there's danger all around us. But you choose to put your angels on watch around our houses every night. Why should we be up when you're going to be up all night? Thank you so much for your hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask that you do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Remove those strongholds that the prejudice and the pride that keeps us from you, getting closer to you. Yes, sir. Give us what we stand most in need of. Yes, Lord. And as always, Lord, you know, I always ask that the love of the Father enfold us. Uh -huh. The wisdom of the Son enlighten us. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit burn in each and every man on this call. And let the blessings of the triune God rest upon us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray. Amen. 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 As a kingdom man, I stand. As a kingdom, As a kingdom man, man, I stand. To acknowledge my position in Christ. To acknowledge my position in Christ. My place in my home. My place in my home. My potential for service in my church. My potential for service in my church. My place in the world. My place in the world. In the world. As a kingdom man, I stand. To acknowledge my position in Christ, to acknowledge, to acknowledge my, my position, position in Christ, my place in my home, my place in my home, my home. My potential for service in my church, my potential for service, service in my church, my, church. my, church. my, church. And my purpose in the world, purpose in the world. In the world. Man. Yeah, right. Thank you so much, man. brother Peter. Well, you sound just like Martin Luther King on that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> you sound just like Martin Luther King on that, brother Peter. All right. <laughs>